African safari to Kenya was incredible. Now most mornings we were up before sunrise and on a game drive after a quick breakfast. I never thought I'd see so many animals. is very different from what we're used to. Traces of Western influence are noticeable, but the traditions of the African tribes prevail. Come along with us on this adventure of a lifetime. It took 18 hours to fly across the Atlantic Ocean, through Europe, across the Mediterranean Sea to Kenya, located in the east central part of Africa. The country of Kenya covers 225,000 square miles in both the northern and southern hemispheres. The equator passes right through the middle of the country. Kenya is about as big as the states of Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, and the Carolinas combined. So what's the weather in Kenya? Actually, it's pretty nice. Temperatures range from 70 to 90 during the day and only drop in the 50s at night. Now, even though the seasons change, the temperatures don't change a whole lot throughout the year because of the close proximity to the equator and the high elevations. Kenya has two rainy seasons, one in November when we were there. That rainy season prompts the wildebeest and zebra migration. It rained just a little almost every day. And we were lucky enough to see the tail end of the wildebeest migration from Kenya into Tanzania. From Kenya's capital city of Nairobi, we headed a couple hundred miles north to our first stop, the Shaba Sarova Lodge, right in the middle of the Shaba National Reserve. There were plenty of animals that made their home at the Shaba Lodge, like crocodiles and the vervet monkeys. It was great to have so much wildlife around us, but it was on the game drives that we saw the big animals up close. Our game drives were so successful because of our knowledgeable drivers. Sammy, the new at the zoo driver, made sure we learned a lot about the animals and the people of Kenya. This one to our right on your side, Sammy, is not a, not a real old animal, is it? Yeah, she's a female. Yeah. She looks full grown. Oh, really? Yeah. Safari, how do you do it? Well. One of the things you have to do is have a vehicle like this. Yep, a good driver helps you, finds the animals for you. Yeah, basically what this is is a modified van with some chairs and the rooftop lifts off so you can actually get close to the animals. Yep. And you can also be safe. <laughs> well, that's right. Because And the other great thing about this is you can shoot pictures right. without any obstructions. No glass, no nothing in the way. And the animals can't get up in here, so we're in good shape. You're right. So going on a game drive is, is like, I know a lot of people like to go fishing. It's just like, you know, there's it is fish like in the fishing. lake, you You're just right. have to go out and find them. And sometimes you'll drive several miles or kilometers, as they call it. Kilometers them here. here. And uh, soon you'll find something. African elephants eat up to 450 pounds of vegetation a day and drink over 40 gallons of water. Samburu National Reserve covers 64 square miles. This game drive took us to the Waso Niro River, or River of Brown Water, a major source of water for the animals during the dry season.
Samburu is home to some very unique animals, like the Grevy Zebra. We were privileged to see this rare zebra up close and find out why it looks so different from a common zebra. This one is uh, the Grevy's is much bigger and it's got white belly, white stomach and big rounded ears. So as for these ones, you only find them here in Samburu Park. You don't find them anywhere else. Hmm. One of the animals I found so interesting was the Jeranook, best known for how they can stand on their hind legs and eat from tall branches. How long can they stay up, Sammy? Oh, a couple of minutes, even five, ten minutes. Depending on uh, whether there is enough food he's picking on. Uh -huh. And I've seen them change, uh, you know, from bush to bush, just walking on two legs. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Yeah. This little guy is called a dick dick. See the little horns? So he's the male. That's full grown. Always two together. And yeah. The You'll always see a male and a female together. Behind the tree, man. They stay with the same mate for life. The young giraffes. Young ones? Yeah. So these ones are the reticulated giraffes. Reticulated giraffes. This is the type you find north of the equator. The landscape was absolutely beautiful, especially when we saw a full rainbow over the Shaba Hills. We saw some incredible scenery and a couple of interesting animals on this game drive, like the Cory Buster, the largest flying bird in the world, and a herd of oryx. After seeing so many incredible things on this game drive, we realized this was only the beginning. You know, you see these animals at the zoo and it's one thing, but you see them out in their natural habitat and mm, it's totally something boggling. different. It absolutely is. It's, uh, you know, and we're just here trying not to make too big a disturbance in their habitat, right. watching them as they live. No control over what they do. They just do what nature lets them do. You know, the most incredible thing about this, uh, with all we've seen already, there's more to see. We've seen just a fragment. That's right. Africa's a big place. Coming up next, a look at the rare Rothschild giraffe you'll find out what makes them different from any other kind of giraffe. Now, can you guess what these Swahili words mean? The answer's when New at the Zoo returns.
Did you figure out what these words mean? Towiga means giraffe. Mamba is a crocodile. And Rafiki is Swahili for friend. Now, Rafiki, back to the show. In Samburu, we saw so many animals up close. Like, remember the elephants pulling up grass and eating it? Remember that first reticulated giraffe with the baby? And all kinds of different antelope, both big and small. Yeah, but there was so much more to see down south. We made our way over some bumpy roads, across the equator, through the Great Rift Valley, past Thompson Falls and over to Lake Nakuru. We only stayed one night and only had time for one game drive. But we weren't disappointed. So they're all the child giraffes. These are, these are the rare ones. In fact, they have been introduced into this park from the western part of Kenya. I see one that's whipping its neck around. You know, that's fighting. That's how giraffes fight. You know, with their necks. So uh -huh. Yeah. There's two of them that are... So that those are fighting. Yeah. Oh, look yeah. at that. That's Hold a fight. still, everybody. Rather the child giraffes. They don't have any markings below the knee. So the white legs are the distinguishing trait of the Rothschild giraffe. Lake Nakuru was created in 1961 and is best known for the concentration of flamingos and other birds that feed off its shores. There is the greater flamingo and the lesser flamingos. The, the tall ones are the greater flamingos. You can see that there are some which are much, much taller. Those are the greater flamingos. So they're greater and lesser. Yeah, greater and lesser. Lake Nakuru is a great place to observe uh, other animals as well, like this bachelor's club of Impala. This is a bachelor's club, yes. <laughs> these, boys, bachelor's hat. these boys look like they're getting old enough, so one of them ought to be able to... Uh, that well, one over there on the left. Quite a few of them are young ones. You see the shape of the horns? Yes. Uh, you see the one on the complete left? Yes. That's a full-grown one now. Yeah, now he's... And the one way at the back there. Now, those are full-grown. Those are the ones which are almost ready to go and challenge the the dominant male. I would think so. Yeah. And in preparation for that fight, young males will practice by sparring with each other. Look, there's a mother impala with a brand new baby. So the baby is no more than three days. And uh, is one of these her male and the other one just a... Uh... No, no, no. She, she gave birth and then they just came across each other. Oh. Otherwise, she, she normally gives birth just by herself. Oh, okay. Just alone, somewhere in the bush. And then stays with the calf for two, three days until the calf is very much acquainted to the mother and then she will go back to the herd. Wow. So it may be a day or two. Wow. How quick are they able to get up and, and walk? Most of the wild animals, the zebras, the impalas, they, 15 minutes after they, born, they are born, they can run as fast as the mother. Amen. These are the white rhinos. They have be, been introduced into the central part of Africa, from South Africa. Why did they introduce them? Because here we have, our original rhino here is the black rhino. So Good. this one's the black rhino, the white rhino are from the southern part of the continent. But the black ones are rare to find. But they're native because to the, they're in, yeah, the black are the native ones to this uh, part of the continent. But they are rare to find.
Suddenly, we had to move quickly. A spotted leopard was seen in a tree a little way off. We didn't get to see much of him, but it was just enough to satisfy our curiosity and get some great pictures. There we go. Get it. Shh. Marking its territory. Driving on dirt roads in the parks isn't without its hazards. We stopped to help another van with a flat tire. In all, the view of Lake Nakuru was so serene. I'm not sure I wanted to leave. Me either. Luckily, Sammy kept us on schedule. Twende, twende. Twende. What? What's that Let's go. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot more to see of our trip to Kenya. Coming up, we head to the Maasai Mara, the natural habitat for so many animals, and one of the most incredible migration events in the world. Now, do you know what these Swahili words mean? We'll have the answer when New at the Zoo returns. If you would like to get in touch with New at the Zoo, send us an email. Check out our New at the Zoo website, www.wate.com. So, do you know what these Swahili words mean? Jumbo means hello. Simba is Swahili for lion. And Kiboko is the word for hippo. Now, back to New at the Zoo. Most of our Kenyan safari was spent in the Maasai Mara, considered the crown jewel of wildlife experiences in Kenya. The Mara has been a haven for wild animals for centuries, officially becoming a national reserve in 1948. As you see from here, you can see lots of spots. Those are bushes. Yes. And then they signify the dots. So that's why it's known as Maasai Mara. Uh -huh. It's quite a big area as far as our eyes can see all the way down to that escarpment. I think we have uh, more uh, wild animals in a Maasai country because of their belief. Uh, they believed that when God created the earth, uh, he, great, he loved the Maasai than any other tribe. And he gave them a cattle through the area roots of a ficus tree. And so they were happy about it. And for them to honor their God, they had to do something. And to do something to honor their God was they did not kill any wild animal to eat apart from the cattle. And thus, the animals of the Mara are plentiful. We were fortunate enough to catch the end of the wildebeest migration from Kenya to Tanzania. We saw over 250,000 animals venture south in search of fresh grass. One group of animals that don't migrate very far are the hippos. I love the hippos. I know you do. I've never seen so many hippos in one place. What we are looking at now is a, a small school, a group of hippos. We call them a school of hippos. School. And uh, the males are territorial. So this is a, a one school, could be a school of about, uh, about uh, uh, 35. How many males in that group? One male. One male and all the rest of well, the yeah. one male. Well, we could, be, we could be having the other males around, few males, but we have one dominant. At night, the hippos come outside the water and you'd find them about five miles away from the water, grazing their grazers. They would go as far as five miles to yes. find food. Yes, and they graze up to about 120 pounds a night. 
They're nice. Wow. Yes. Okay, what about uh, the predators and what, what's the predator for a hippo? Uh, uh, the predators for hippos are uh, lions. The lions would kill hippos when the wildebeest are not around. And the, the other major predator we see down here, maybe not for hippo, but for other animals, is the croc. Yes. And and the no. crocodiles would go for the baby hippos. Would they? If the baby hippos are not protected, well, if they are not accompanied, if they are not accompanied with their mother. And what else? Would they, I guess, if the wildebeest came through here too? Yes. The crocs if the wildebeest came in through here, then they would be killed by the crocodiles. <laughs> and now the crocodiles, they ate a lot this year. And uh, uh, the what the they ate, what they ate would last them for a year. A year? Really? Yes. They store, so they don't have to eat? They store enough food to last them for a year. One of the questions I was asked many times before we left to come here to Africa is, my goodness, are you just going to be staying out there where the animals can get oh, at you? And how does yes. that work? This is the Mara Sarova tented camp, they call it. Yeah, and tented mm -hmm. meaning that there's a tent here. It is a tent with mm -hmm. the beds and a dresser and electricity. electricity. And in and the very back, there's actually a each private restroom. Each tent has its own bathroom. Yeah. Besides this lovely veranda, we've got a, a shelter over the top. I guess we are roughing it here in Africa. Yeah. You know, it's almost time for our next game drive, by the way. You know, you're right, it is. Maybe we better go. All right, let's head out. Here's the third of the three types of giraffes found in Kenya. It's called the Maasai giraffe. Jagged body markings and short horns distinguish this giraffe from the other two species we've seen. The Maasai Mara is full of so many different kinds of wildlife. You never know what you're going to see. There's the rare bat-eared fox running along with the wildebeest. In a time of transition for both the landscape and the animals, new additions to the animal kingdom dot the African plains. This baby elephant is less than a day old. He still has his umbilical cord. We had to look closely not to miss these baby warthogs. This baby zebra doesn't particularly like that oxpecker perched on his back. With all the animals we saw on safari, there was one experience left to see. The Maasai people. A typical Maasai day starts at sunrise. We arrived just before the cattle were let out for the day. Our guide through the village was Diana, the wife of the chief's son and one of the few educated people in this village. After a welcome song, we got a first-hand tour of a Maasai home. Head down here. Yes. So let me be, be very quick because the house is a bit smoky. Okay. That is the bedroom for mama and okay. On top of the bed is cowhide. This is the fireplace for making food and for warming ourselves during cold nights. That hole overhead there up is the chimney to allow smoke outside the house. Ah. Well, the houses are made from sticks, cowhide and cow manure. <laughs> These Maasai men showed us how to start a fire. No matches or lighters here, just good old-fashioned elbow grease. After our tour around the village, we were shown many curios and trinkets to trade or purchase. I had my eye on a ranga, or protection stick. Yeah, how, mu how much for this? Ten dollars for this. Ten American dollars? Ten American dollars. What about with this included? Hmm? About 500 shillings? A bandana, mm -hmm. two pens, two ink pens, okay. and 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. 
Did all that work for this? Is that a deal? Ah, okay. Asante. Asante. My runga was carved by the oldest man in the village, estimated to be about 60 or 65 years old. He said it took about a week to carve it. The Maasai are deeply rooted in their traditions, but slowly letting Western influences into their lives. Well, we've only been able to show you this much of the vast variety of animals we've been able to see. That's true, but you know what? On upcoming episodes of New at the Zoo, you're going to see a lot more about our African safari. Asante sana! Which means, thanks for watching. Hey, by the way, there's, there's another game drive. There's time, let's go.